um, for me to win. I have to uh, get my shirt and my card and all that shit. I got registered. <laughs> And you weren't going to register? I never register because I don't like standing in no damn lines. Do I need to sign paperwork? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How are you? Okay. 125.23. Come on, cowboy. Oh, she was You're high. I'm six foot three, so you know, six times 12 is 75. You know in centimeters? Well, hell no, I'm American, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Inches, man. Okay. Six foot three. 35 See, with a gang of pride, cool. man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your forearm size. Big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The B best. The I best. G. I don't know. No, uh, no clue. Biceps? No clue. Fucking huge. Yeah. The best. <laughs> the best. Okay. Uh, style of fighting? Um, top row. Okay, that's all. You can tell me this joke now. I already said the joke, man. You didn't get the joke, I, man. I You're not aware of the joke, man. You're not as sharp as me like that. See that? <laughs> you know, my English that's is not very good. No so. problem, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> my Russian very good. I'm not Russian. My Polish very good. Yeah? Yes. Okay. See. You know, everyone's, you know, good at something. And when it comes to left-handed arm wrestling, even an unprepared, lazy Travis Bajan is very hard to handle left-handed. Uh, Look at his arm right there. This is the biggest match ever. Never, ever have there been two more highly decorated people that uh, that haven't met up with each other. Um, you know, and the world really wants to see it. The message board's going crazy. And, uh, um, you know, it's pretty funny because I would never thought that I would see um, in English that uh, I was going to lose. I always, you know, would translate it from the Polish sites and the Russian sites. And, of course, they all think Dennis is just going to kill me. I might as well not even show up. But rarely have I heard it from North Americans. And there are some. Um. You know, I don't know, I'm not in a position to really play strategy left-handed. I mean, I'm supposed to be the man, so just be the man if you can be the man. <laughs> I'm gonna beat this dude, I'm telling you right now, that's a fact. You know, it wouldn't be the end of the world if his pec tendon just flung off into the <laughs> all into the crowd, right? To ask me, I'm coming here to win the heavyweight left-handed as convincingly as I can. Where I fucking throw Rustam and Lubomir off the fucking stage, right? <laughs> like, listen, yeah. this is a whole other category. <laughs> but I will be firing, teeing off immediately on those guys. I just as soon smack every human being. So if you try to set the bracket up, you just fuck one of them. <laughs> ba -pow! And there's blood everywhere, that thing. But I'm telling you right now, your worst nightmare is to see me at any point during that tournament. Right now, it may not work out, but that's the strategy. It's just try to, try to, I mean, just ask John for saying, he'll tell you that. It's a bunch of bullshit, if you ask me. <laughs> Well, I think that he's definitely going to be, um, you know, there's going to be a thickness in his um, index finger and thumb and hand that uh, is probably going to be a little strange for me. For the most part, no one's big hand has ever uh, scared me as, as much as Dennis. You know, I think Dennis is going to grab me high and low at the same time. I think his pinky will be near my wrist and his index finger will be, you know, up on my thumb. So it's going to be interesting. Um, he's got um, kind of longer levers than he probably should. I think that's one thing that, uh, so his elbow height to finger 
is going to be comparable to mine and just like other heavyweights. So that's kind of good. Um, however, I do think that there is a lane that he possesses that I probably can't slow him down in. So I just got to make sure he doesn't, you know, get a nice positive wrist curl, get on his side of the table and start his attack. It's okay if he starts his attack as long as his hand and wrist is compromised in some position and that we're at the middle or maybe even 10 o'clock on my side of the table. And I think then um, it's going to put a lot of pressure on his shoulder and his pec tendon. And I think that, you know, there's a chance we'll hear a big explosion. Bam! And there it goes and dangling. And I'm like, I done killed the Russian. I killed the Russian. But we'll see. Hopefully, I don't wish an injury on anyone, but hopefully that he's not so strong that he busts his whole freaking chest off. Because I don't think that pinning me is a possibility, but hurting himself is definitely, uh, a, you know, there's definitely a chance. <laughs> Tell me about your health. You're sweating now. <laughs> Three or four days ago, you caught. You have some disease that no one knows about. Yeah, I got some bumps on me. Measles, chicken pockish looking rosacea, bumps everywhere on me. Uh, had a fever for about four or five days. Took a couple shots from the doctor's office. Uh, got some antibiotics. I've eaten about 40 Advil in the past week and a half. So definitely from 285 down to 265. But um, you know, I can definitely uh, know that uh, I'm on the last, the last hours of this sickness. So, hopefully, starting tomorrow, it's uh, back to work every single day. Super wide legs. And go. One. Two. Give five. Three. Under control. Slower. Four, five, and then two burpees. Ah. Two burpees, go. Now that's a push up. Do a burpee all the way down, all the way back up. One, go all the way down. Go. Do a burpee. Go up. No, you're not even you get your chest down. Back up. Now go all the way down. All the way down. All the way down. You got to get your chest on the ground. Go. That's zero, no rep. There we go. Up. One. Up, two, good job. You're pretty good at that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. How do you feel today? Are you going to train today? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to have to. It's the last day of you filming here. I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm still sick as a dog, but yeah, I'll be able to do something. Just to show you at least I'm, I'm going to go to this arm wrestling tournament. <laughs> You, do you feel confident you can win even though you're not you haven't been training? Well, yeah, but I was training up until five days ago, so yeah, I think I'm stronger than I haven't been my whole life. Definitely motivated, and uh, yeah, I, I, I still think I still think I'm gonna win. Now, if I'm still sick in a week from now, maybe I'll have a little doubt, but I feel like I still have enough time. Look at this orange team. Well, they look good, don't they? All right, come on, D. Let's go. Yeah, be careful. Don't hurt yourself. Before I became a level one certified and got really introduced to CrossFit, um, uh, I, I, was, I was already a youth football coach, you know, for probably three years. And um, the main thing that CrossFit has changed our coaching um, strategy, at least to say, is we just spend a lot more time now on, um, you know, more detailed football stuff instead of doing the traditional uh, um, conditioning after practice. Keep banging, baby, keep banging. You look good. Have fun banging. All right, let's go, Isaiah, Drake. Drake, just go ahead, Drake. Uh, just put everybody on their back. Just toss them on the ground. They gotta learn. Guys, get away from him immediately. You can't look at him, you gotta look at me. Set, hut. 
Get here, Isaiah. Got to get out of there, Isaiah. Go. All right, good job. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. He's going to do it to every one of you. Don't let him get your hands on you. Let's go. Here we go. Listen, the camera's going to be around today. It's just a guy following me around for arm wrestling. It's no big deal. Surprise. If somebody here has a problem with it, you know, some people don't like their kids on camera. Um, I do. You kicked off the team if you got a problem with it. All right. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. It's gotten the kids in the first uh, 35 minutes of practice done their conditioning. So now they can give us their max effort without trying to hold back anything for this conditioning at the end of practice that we used to put them through. All right, listen, we're going to do the CrossFit workout. Very simple today, okay? We're going to play CrossFit baseball. Okay. The workout is 50 jumping jacks, 10 burpees. 25 jumping jacks, five burpees, and then you come home and you get a point and then you do your 50 again, right? You can see how many points you can score in four minutes. In order to get a hit, you gotta do 50 jumping jacks, right? There goes Ezra. There goes Isaiah. And there goes Brady. The only one that can count the 50. <laughs> seen him more or less just absolutely take control I've seen him take control sideways and then here get control so you know there's I mean I've watched more than I could ever watch against somebody the problem I have is that I haven't seen him in trouble except with push car you know there's no one else hey Travis and that's, and, sorry, sorry, I, I think I think push car might pose a bigger obstacle for you than Dennis because he's got the longer arm the stronger hand and he, if he's confident, it, it might be much more difficult to top roll and get out on on, uh, on Andre than, than Dennis. Good. You look uh, look solid there, fella. Should be fun. It's going to be an exciting event. You and him, that's a train wreck. What about pressure one on one? Who is that? Both of you. Who is that? That is Andre Pushker, the Ukraine pain train. He's a beast. He's good? Yeah, he's really good. He's actually my tip to win the thing. Who is that? Andre Pushkar, <laughs> bad dude, Ukraine. Top three Zloty Tour last six years. Runner up the last two years. Maybe the strongest guy last year. A couple bad calls, got him second place. Pretty bad dude. If I do have a concern for Pushkar, it would be that Travis Bajan has beaten Andre on almost every occasion they've ever met. And Travis is not the kind of guy you need to be playing games with your mind. Because he will do it. He will exploit, 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 and destroy your mind. And Pushka is a young man. And Pushka is a young man. teach uh, CrossFit to the Shepherd College uh, soccer team for the past three years and uh, Matt and three other guys now that they're done with the soccer team they just come privately and do it. We actually missed the last two days because I was sick so uh, he's probably not that happy right now. <laughs> I'll tell you what forget the thruster just one squat. So, one. Um, it was my junior year in spring. Um, our coach introduced us to Travis Bajant, um, and he introduced us to CrossFit. And for the whole spring, we um, we did CrossFit, and I liked it a lot. Six, seven, put it down, and then one muscle up. So over the summer, um, I looked online, and I found a gym at home that did CrossFit, and I did that all summer, and it helped me a lot. It, um, I was the best one in shape on the team. And I ended up being All-American in soccer, and I don't think I could have done it without, you know, CrossFit and all this, you know, great stuff, so it helped me a lot. I think 9% of it is, is mental toughness. 
um, to push through things. Um, CrossFit, you know, it's pretty tough. And if you can get that edge on mental toughness, then you can get edge on your opponents and, you know, be the winner, come out on top. So, but it's it also helps strength wise and and all and cardiovascular especially. So, overall, it was a, it's good. Five, four, no rep, just kidding. And time. Good job, kid. Great job. <laughs> Wreck that. That shit was, I thought it was a great workout, and then I was like, holy shit. Oh, his, his coaching was excellent. He, um, I'm assuming here he's, he's nicer, but with the soccer team, he's, he pushes us to the limit, you know, he yells at us, but he's a great motivator and a, a great coach. So. He was nicer here today? Yeah, oh yeah. But it's good, I mean, it works both ways. So, a lane in arm wrestling will be simple, right? Obviously, if I just go straight sideways, right, that's a sideways lane. And then if I kind of suck the weight towards me, right, and then pull a little bit towards the corner, there's a lane. I believe that if Dennis not only gets his wrist curl, right, and gets me on his side of the table, that there's a lane there that I won't be able to stop him from pulling me down. However, if we say go and his hand starts to open up and then I start to take him on his side of the table. Now, if he starts jerking sideways, he's gonna get a lot more of this chest and shoulder involved and there could be right around, bam, right there. You might see him shrivel up like that. And then by that time, I'll be up in his grill telling him I'm the man. So hopefully that doesn't happen to him. Are there any other threats in that class besides him? There is. There's a huge threat in that. Uh, it's really amazing that it gets looked over. And Andre Pushkar, for the big Ukrainian, you know, that used to be, I think I started whipping him when he was like 17, 18 years old. Now he's a 27-year-old grown man, and he's finished second the last two years at the Zloty Cup, both left and right-handed. Actually, even won it three years ago before Dennis participated. So... Um, I believe that Andre thinks that he will beat Dennis this year, left and right-handed. American team, baby. <laughs> On the flip side, you know, I'm going to talk so much shit that even me losing is going to be good for the journal. It's going to be good for this town or for, you know, Russian pride, I guess, because I don't know if I've ever, uh, my left hand's never went down to a foreigner, ever. If you wasn't born in North America, I've never even allowed you even one win left-handed. So, you know, there's a lot of them looking you know, forward to, to seeing you fall.
touchy all of a sudden. That's one more way. Dario. Adelowska. I'll tell you right now, I can definitely beat that guy. I'm going to tell you right now, his hands are weak as shit. I'm going to tell you right now, that dude, I can beat that guy. What? I can beat that guy. His hand. Oh. Man, he even, he even surprised me when he said, ready, go so fast. I'm sorry about earlier. Didn't mean nothing about it. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you, man. I was talking to that guy, man. <laughs> Good luck, man. You put it in the strap when Andre I'll bust his ass. Put it in the strap. Foul, 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 foul. Foul, foul. Ready for the open, right? Bro, oh, that is fucking fresh. <laughs> nah, I ain't interviewing no more. Fuck y'all. Tell his confidence went away as soon as he got uh, you know, that first loss with Andre. I mean, it's tough to bounce back after you've been crushed like that. Thank you. Not good, but hopefully it'll fire him up for next time. No, oh, he's never going to retire. He's still got a good 10 years left in him. Um, 2005. Please. Yes. Focus. Focus. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Next year. Really? I'm gonna have to. I mean, I can't leave out here. I told him I wasn't never coming back because I'd already won it, but now I'm gonna have to come back. 
probably ain't gonna get paid too much either to come back. <laughs> Here's the one and only John Jank. Hi, John. Hello. Hello. Uh, I want to ask you about this year's Nimirov, uh, about the organization of the contest, about the backstage of the contest. What do you think? Well, the Nimirov is, is the top tournament of the year. It's uh, first class all the way, uh, lots of lights, lots of cameras, um, just, high, uh, just a high quality production. And it brings the best arm wrestlers in the world to Warsaw. What, uh, if you have to bet on uh, someone today, in a, uh, maybe in the highest weight, what, what, on who can you bet on? Well, we, we brought a really good team from the United States this year. Uh, Jerry Cataret is uh, in, in top form. Uh, Travis Bajant also uh, here today. Um, but yeah, uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Dennis Saplinkoff, of course, is a huge force. Andre Pushkar proved himself yesterday in the left-handed division. So um, it's going to be, I think, if, if they don't ruin each other, I'm going to go with uh, Andre Pushkar against uh, USA's Jerry Cataret for the final. And let the strongest guy win. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, this year, uh, mm, you came here uh, as a trainer. It's a new role for you. Yeah. Well, this year I, I, I wasn't able to compete. Um, I had uh, shoulder surgery on May 4th. I had a torn labrum. Uh, so I'm still trying to rehab that. It's probably another six, eight months away before I can start really putting a lot of pressure on it. I hope to be back next year in, in, in competitive form to, uh, to prove that I'm still still have have what it takes to win yeah, so you uh, you pl you're planning to to compete yeah no I, I'm not retired yet I'm not officially retired yet I'm uh, 47 years old and um, I, I still think I have a few more years left in me so uh, I get this shoulder situation uh, resolved and I'll be back uh, hopefully be back next year I always wanted to ask you about um, Sport nutrition. Uh, when you are uh, preparing to the contest, do you use any protein powders, amino, amino acids, creatine? Yeah, of course. I think it's important to have good nutrition when you're working out, or you, you know, all that that effort is going to waste. So, uh, oh, de most definitely. Yeah, nu nutrition is very important. What about the diet? Uh, you eat uh, what you want at uh, any time you want, or someone uh, just. Uh, road to you? I try to eat clean. I mean, especially if I'm trying to make the 95 kilo class, I'm typically walking around around 100 kilos. So uh, if I'm eating as much as I can just to try to bulk, um, of course, as the tournament time becomes close, I have to, uh, I have to restrict my diet and, and, and count the calories. And uh, um, yeah, so I do, I do watch my, my uh, calorie intake. And now the question from the history, because uh, Mm, I, want, I wanted to ask you, I was always wondering about the, the uh, over the top uh, movie. Okay. Uh, when you were filming, uh, s you were advising to Mr. Stallone. Yeah, uh, Sylvester Stallone didn't really know anything about the sport of arm wrestling until he got involved with the movie Over the Top. So, um, yeah, I mean, what he learned uh, was from arm wrestlers, and uh, I got a chance to talk with him and take pictures and, and show him a little bit of what I knew at the time. I was a very young, young boy at you know, 20, 21 years old when the over the top went on. So um, I wasn't that experienced. There was a lot of guys that were a lot more experienced than myself. But um, yeah, it was a once in a lifetime deal. I, I, you know, yeah. How was he backstage? Uh, nice, super nice guy. Uh, very inquisitive. I mean, he wanted to know about the sport, uh, was genuinely interested in what was going on with the, with the sport. And um, I, I think he really hoped and wished that it would have good, great su success. And uh, no, good natured guy. And the, uh, maybe you have any funny story about the making? No, uh, no funny stories. Um, no, I, I uh, we didn't we didn't go hang out or drink or anything like that together. So I don't have any really personal stories. My 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 experience went with him was very official, and um, you know. The biggest uh, mystery about him is his height. Um, I, he's. I don't know what his official height is, but I think he's a little under six foot, maybe 5'10". Um, in good shape, though. I mean, he, he's well proportioned. Uh, um, big hand. He would be a good arm wrestler if he decided he wanted to pursue it. But of course, I mean, his forte was acting, so he's not going to be an arm wrestler. But he, 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 was, he, had, he had some potential to be a good arm wrestler if he wanted to be. You think? Yes. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you for, for no talking to me. Thank you. Fitmax, the champion's choice.
We are ready, we are ready. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Travis Bajant. Hello, sir. I'm fine, how are you? Terrific. What is, what is your opinion about disease in Miro? Oh, it's amazing. Uh, I haven't been here for close to six years, and uh, the tournament is, uh, has changed. It's gotten so big, and... I Igor and the money and the prestige and the, you know everything's just first class. You'll be back here next year? I will. I will be back next year and for many years to come. I won't miss this tournament again. What happened yesterday? Did you expect it? Yes, very unexpected. Uh, you know, I've been the, the best left-handed arm wrestler for over 10 years and never really had much trouble. Maybe I underestimated uh, some of my opponents, but I felt really good the first match against Andre. And um, a couple elbow fouls. I thought I was going to be in control of that match and then got a little uneasy because of the elbow fouls and uh, slowed down and pretty much uh, got my butt whipped. So it happens in arm wrestling. Yeah, that's right. Did you get injured? Not injured, just, uh, just slightly uncomfortable in the elbow area. But uh, it'll be nothing, just back to the drawing board. Uh, maybe this is what I needed to wake up a little bit. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're on top for so long, you get used to it, and maybe you don't work as hard. So you can bet that uh, Travis Bazin is going to be hard at work for the next 52 weeks. Yeah, I bet. So uh, what, do, what supplements do you use in, uh, in our preparations to um, contest? Um, let me see. Pre preparations for this contest or for next year? Maybe for this. For this one, um, well, the National Arm Wrestling League is in the United States in um, three tournaments a year. Um, so it has me pretty busy. Um, arm fights uh, I have planned for Igor in January in Las Vegas will uh, hopefully uh, start my mid-season form to get ready for next year's Lottie. What do you think about Alexei Voivoda? Um, yeah, I think it's amazing. Good bobsledder. Okay arm wrestler, very good bobsledder. Yeah, I've heard. <laughs> so uh, what are your plans for the future? Um, well, I have three kids and a wife and a uh, job, so I'm going to stay diligently working at that and uh, hopefully back on top of the arm wrestling world very soon. Um, maybe you're planning something for next year, some strategy or some strategy for um, preparations? Definitely, I'm going to get off the couch. That's going to be the first thing I do is get off the couch, uh, stop um, relying on just my arm wrestling skills and really uh, maybe get bigger and stronger like I was in the past. Okay, thank you, Travis. Hey, thank you. Take care. Travis, one more Fit Max, the champion's choice. Just no nah. question. No question. Yes. Tell me exactly what you want me to say. What do you want me to do? Uh, what do you want? It's here. I want the mm, World Cup. Yeah. Again. Yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, again. Back to US. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take from Russia. Give to US. Yes? Who is the win? Who is the beast in left hand? Please Travis Bajan, right here. No, po oh, right. no problem. No problem. No, no problem. No yeah, problem. Right here. Yeah, you know who the winner is. That's why you called me. <laughs> yeah, Russian guys, you let them win, then they piss you off. So you gotta call American guy to come back over here, and take care of the Russian guy. That's what I'm here for. I'm here for you. I'm like police. Polish police from U.S. <laughs> Polish police from U.S.A. <laughs> uh, where's your uh, family? Family here? Yeah. The kids? No. No kids? You kids. You yeah, my yeah. kids. You my kids. <laughs> you my father. <laughs> tonight's category against maybe the heaviest. Does size matter? We're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Russia, I'd like you firstly to welcome to the stage a living legend of the sport of arm wrestling. He is the Russian national and world champion, Haji
this little guy going to be able to hold off Jerry Cataret's press? Especially after that hard match with Rustam. If he does, new respect. And he has a Not only strong, but good endurance. Ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome this will be no easy task. Because Jerry really hasn't had a pull yet. Here in Warsaw. He hails from Massachusetts, USA. The former multiple champion of the world. The Ginger Dreadman, Jerry Carter. go 145 kilos against 76 kilo Woo. Jerry the ginger red man can do it Hachi Halimula Zoev here we go it's the lightweight versus the super heavyweight in Warsaw Poland at the Nemino World Cup and believe me both these men are insanely powerful I say no way. The forearm of Haji Zola is phenomenal. The mass from Massachusetts is Jerry Cataret. Cataret is built like a tank. He has incredible tricep power. He's facing one of the most... Elbow foul, Jerry Cataret. Elbow foul, Jerry Cataret. He's going to have to plant it. He's going to be in a war here. <laughs> this little guy's for real. <laughs> He did not move. Coincidental foul, both men with the elbow foul. We will restart the match. One foul on Jerry Cataret, elbow. Gonna start him again. Jerry, at this point, it's gotta be saying, what Referees the hell? Referees undecided there on the foul. Jerry Cataret receives the foul. Has the mule at Zola. Does not receive the foul. We will go back to the center of the table and restart the match. The American will have the brakes on him a little bit now and must be careful. And away we go. We are deep, deep inside. Huge drive. Both men dead center locked in. What dead center. Zolaf's so holding him off. Looks confident. Zola pins him. Wow, in a hook. That's one bad boy. Wow! Enormous drive to the side. Transition to the top row. 
ridiculous power from Hatsi Buren. Zolan. 